a lot of experimental effects have been added to most of the modules in game just as we've been used to with the weapons and I'm taking a look at some of them today. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. I am once again over here on the beta server and I want to have a look at the new experimental upgrades that's been added. So we're going to go over not all of them, but the ones that I find most interesting and probably some of the most used modules. And we're going to go over see what kind of experimental upgrades you can now get. And I'm going to try and talk about which um, upgrades I think is most useful in which situations. So let's start out by looking at the engines. If we go in here, we can now go down to exper experimental effects and we can see we have a plethora of experimental effects we can apply. I should now say with the new engineering system, you can apply these whenever you want. You don't have to apply them as part of a role. So right now, if I wanted to go thermal spread, I could just apply that. And if I wanted to change my mind, I go back to strip down, I could just go in and apply it. So I'm going to start with the thermal spread because this is one of the um, special effects that we see on many of the modules. What thermal spread does is it increases the thermal characteristics of the module. So in this case, we get a plus 10% increase, also a decrease in thermal load. So we get, generate less heat from the engines at a cost of 5% increase in mass. So in case with the engine, so with all the modules, we're going to lose a little bit of jump range. We're going to lose a little bit of maneuverability, a little bit of max speed because of that increased mass. But again, it's only the mass of the module itself. So because the engines are, well, they are the little on the heavy side, but... It's not too bad. So in this case, if you have a ship that's overheating a lot, it might be in a, um, in a PVE ship. I could see if you have a PVE ship, you have problems with overheating. Maybe if you're running a lot of lasers, then I could see going thermal spread could be a useful uh, option. I want to jump down here to, um, to double breach because this is one of the upgrades that pretty much all the, uh, the modules have. And this is basically the heavy duty version. We can see here it increases integrity by 15% um, at no apparent drawback. So this again would be good maybe if you are playing an armor tank maybe uh, built. So for instance, finding Thargoids, you would maybe often want to try and use double breached in many cases, at least on your core modules, because it's going to prevent them from taking damage and, um, and malfunctioning uh, when you're taking uh, hull damage. Strip down is the explorer's choice. It reduces the mass by 10%. So again, if jump range is the most important or being lightweight in case if you're building a speed ship that's supposed to go fast, then maybe strip down could be, uh, be an option, but there are better options for speed. So this would pretty much only be useful, I think, for, um, um, for explorers. And the last two one are the ones that are special for the drives here. One is a 10% increase in optimal mass and the other one, drag drives, gives a increase in optimal multiplier but a decrease in thermal load. And the difference between the optimal multiplier and the optimal mass. The optimal mass only increases your mass curve efficiency, so that increases your maneuverability. Whereas the optimal multiplier both give you an increase in maneuverability, but also in speed. Um, but again, gaining both of them, it comes at a cost. So now you're also getting a penalty to your thermal load. So you can either get only the, the maneuverability upgrade at no drawback, or you can gain both maneuverability and a speed upgrade upgrade at a cost of thermal load. So again, it's a trade-off you want to, what you want to do. I would probably, for a PVE ship, I would probably go for the uh, drive distributors to gain the additional maneuverability. Whereas if you're going for a PVP ship, I might actually want to go for a, uh, a drag drive unless you're running a silent build, of course, because then you're going to have problems with the thermals. But anyway, so those are the drives. We're not going to spend as much time on the rest of them um, because many of them are the same. But Let's move on to the frame shift drive we have here. We can see we are getting, beginning to see a lot of the same double breached, again, integrity, stripped down, less mass, and the thermal spread, which is the same as before, decreased to thermal load. Pretty much the same thing here uh, as we talked about before. So we're just going to jump into the two um, special one. The one is called deep charge. And deep charge increases the amount of fuel, the maximum amount of fuel you can put into one jump 
uh, by 10% and reduces the power draw. So this is probably going to be the one that's going to give you the most additional jump range, I think, because the other one here is optimized mass increase um, at a cost of integrity. Um, so I'm not really sure which one's going to be the most effective in which situations, but again, you can freely switch between the two. So you can try and see which one gives you the most jump range. Um, and I guess that depends on your build. If you have the extra power draw, I guess I would probably go for, for the deep charge. Um, otherwise, you can pay off with the integrity instead. Uh, again, that depends a little bit on your your specific case. So, uh, so try out both of them. Okay, moving on to the um, power distributor. Again, double breach, strip down. Um, we still have, we do not have thermal control here. But we have uh, a few here that's um, pretty interesting, I think. First of all, the flow control reduces the power draw of the um, um, of the distributor. A, a kind of a weird choice. Uh, it's, it seems like it's the only module where you can reduce the power draw, um, and it's not like the it uses that much power to to start with. But I guess it should make the ship more heat efficient, drawing less power, which is nice. Um, but the ones that I think is most interesting is the cluster capacitors and the superconductors. Cluster capacitors as the name suggests, increases your capacity of all the different modules, all the different um, capacity uh, areas, whatever you want to call them. So this is a bit like uh, capacity-focused, um, the, the manual engineering modification. I should say you still have those, of course, if it wasn't obvious. So you still go out here and go engine-focused, charged, enhanced, or high-charge capacity. So it's a bit like the high-charge capacity here. But in this case, you gain a plus 8% increase to your capacity, and a minus 2% to your recharge. Whereas with the superconductors, you gain four plus um, to your recharge and minus four on your capacitors. So I think this is pretty much a no brainer, even though I would go, I would probably, in most cases, I would probably go charge enhanced for the experimental, for the normal uh, roles out here. So go charge enhanced power distributors, increase that. It is going to decrease my, um, um, my total capacitor by 5% and I've got to get an increase in uh, in the charge by 45% and then I would probably apply an experimental effect oh come on there we go an experimental effect with the uh, cluster capacitors increase my um, weapon capacity by 8% that should counteract the 5% actually give me a little bit more and I only lose 2% in my overall charge so I think this is definitely one of the better choices when it comes to, uh, to capacitors um, so let's go back and um, let's move on to the shield cell bank. It's the next one on the list. And the shield cell banks also has the flow control. Um, apparently there were more than that had this one. Uh, less draw, um, double breach and strip down, still increased integrity and increased mass. And then we have two others here and they are kind of interesting. Um, we have the recycling uh, shell. This gives you a, when you fire off the shield cell bank, it gives you a longer duration when it activates. It increases by 10%. Um, but you lose 5% in your shield reinforcements per second. But overall, of course, you're going to get more hit points out of your shield cell banks applying this, but it's going to take longer. Um, where you go with the boss shells, you gain um, more hit points per second at the same time. Uh, amount of time, but the spin up time is increased by 20%. That means the time from when you actually fire off the shield cell bank until it activates and begins to give you shield has increased by 20%. Um, so if you're looking for pure shield hit points, I think that the boss shell is going to be slightly better because you're going to get it faster, but the recycling shell is definitely a decent option as well. Um, again, it depends on the size of your shield, if you can afford to lose that extra, that 5% of, uh, of hit points, or if you want that extra hit points uh, out of your shields. Um, but of course, using boss shell, you need to be a little bit more prepared, because it's going to take you 6 seconds from your fire to it'll actually activate. So, again, it depends a lot on your playstyle. I can see both of these being, um, being uh, valid options, at least for PvE ships. I'm mainly focusing on the PvE ships here, of course. Moving on to the internal armor. This is not hull plating. This is the armor you have in your core internals. And the upgrade we have here is pretty self-explanatory. You either get an increase in thermal resist at a cost of hull boost. You can gain kinetic resist at a cost of hull boost or explosive resist at the cost of hull boost. 
or finally you can get the deep plating which gives you more hull at the cost of all of the three resistances so again this depends on the specific uh, thing you're doing in most cases if you're doing armor tanking you're probably gonna go out and hunt thargoids in which case i would probably go for the increase in hull mass or hull uh, pull boost um just to get that extra hit, hit points and then of course because well your resistance is not really that effective when it comes to um to the thargoids uh anyway so i would probably end up using the deep plating at least for when it comes to armor tanking against the thargoids and moving on to the power plants, again, we are back on uh, <laughs> unknown ground here. We have the thermal spread, again, heat efficiency. We have double breach for integrity, and we have the strip down for less mass. And then we have the, what is that, Mon monstrate, which gives you even more power output. So this increases your power output by 5%, but it costs you 10% increase in mass for the module. So... Um, in this case, I would probably in most cases, I mean, if you can, um, if you can use the, if you need the extra power, of course, this is the, the obvious choice, but otherwise double breach might be very good for the power plant because especially in the PVE, the PVP situation where people would, if they're sniping modules, they would most likely be trying to snipe your power plant. Um, for jump ships, for exploration ships, again, strip down is a good option. Also the thermal efficiency. Um, Reduction 10% can be very, very good on the power plant because I think it's going to apply to all the modules because the way thermals are, um, the thermals is computed from the um, from the power plant is the more power you draw, the more heat the, um, the power plant is going to generate. So having a better heat efficient power plant is going to really help you a lot with your thermals. So this is probably one of the best you can go for if you have problems with your thermals. Um, but for a pure PvE ship, I would probably go for the extra power and just fit bigger weapons or I don't know what else it would fit. Um, maybe go for a uh, for a lower roll out here so I wouldn't get that uh, that hit on the heat efficiency out here and then just accept the mass uh, increase that you gain from uh, the power plant. After the power plant, we get to the shield um, generators and there is a lot of upgrades. So let's go over them here real quick. Once again, we have stripped down, dub reached, um and no then we have another thermal there but double breach and strip down we already know uh, integrity and mass um and then we have some pretty interesting one here fast charge it gives you faster 15 percent faster broken regen rate and also shield regen rate at a small decrease in your resistances now I could see this. I mean, I personally, on PvE ships, when I go out and do NPC hunting, I like bi-weaves because of the increased, um, of the increased uh, shield recharge, but you don't really need that... Um, um, you don't really need that, that that extra hit points because you just need enough hit points to survive a single battle. And if you have fast recharge, it's going to recharge faster. So I would probably go fast charged on my... Um, uh, on my PVE ships, um, especially if you go out and use it together with something like Reinforced, as you can see here. Um, that does reduce your broken regen rate, but Reinforced does not... Uh, it both gives you resistances, it gives you um, hit points. It reduces your broken regen rate, but it looks like it does not reduce your recharge rate anymore. Uh, I'm pretty sure it used to, but the shield regen is apparently not affected anymore. So the fact that you can gain pretty much a good spread of resistance and hit points across the board and that compared with um with the extra regen rate you gain in here and um and only a small reduction in hit points is probably going to make this a very 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 good option okay so there are also the multi-weave this is the um um, a slightly different one. This gives you um, a decent increase. Um, actually, quite small, but at least for the thermals, it's pretty good. Um, but it gives you some increase to your resistances. It costs you 10% power draw. And it gives you an additional 25% distributed draw. So using this, gaining this extra resistance is really going to cost you. Um, because that 25% extra increase in power draw pretty much means you need an extra pip to your shields in order to keep those um, those running, which is going to be very expensive, especially in a combat ship. Um, so unless you're going to go balls to the walls to go all resistance, then I think 
I think that distributed draw is a little bit too much for, uh, for me to want to go for that, at least. Um, you can go high cap. High cap again. You also gain the, the same as before, 10% reduction in power draw and um, a distributed, a fifth, no, a 25% distributed draw, 10% power draw, and you gain an increase in shield hit points. Um, again, I think the distributed draw is just too big to, uh, to be a, too much of a viable option. Then we have the low draw, which is pretty much the opposite of the multi-weave. Here you get less power draw, 20% actually, that's a lot. Um, you get less distributed draw, and you get that by losing a small amount of resistance and a small amount of shield hit points. So this would probably be a very good choice for ships using prismatics. So if you're having a hard time, because often a deal when you fit prismatics, you're going to suffer in your weapon departments because you're going to spend so much of your energy fitting that prismatic. So if you're flying a cutter, I could see low draw be a viable option to reduce the power draw by 20% and then use that extra power draw to fit um, more powerful weapons and the hereby increase your, your DPS. So, so I could see this being a, a viable option for, for a, uh, a ship using a prismatic shield. And the final two ones we have here is of course a thermal block and force block which give you an increase in the thermal resist or kinetic resist at the cost of optimal strength, so a cost of hit points. Funnily enough, it does not seem like there is a explosive block, so you cannot increase the explosive resistance of the shields using the experimental effects, only thermal and force. It's odd that they left that one out, but again, I guess that's, uh, that's how it is. And now that we are with shields, let's move on to the shield boosters. Again, we have double breach, we have flow control, we already talked about those, less power draw and uh, high integrity. Then we have the thermal block, force block and blast block. Um, again, we pretty much talked about those on the shield. It is thermal resist at a cost of uh, shield hit points, um, kinetic resist or explosive resist, both at the same cost of, um, of that shield hit points. And the final one is the uh, supercapacitors, which uh, increases your shield hit points at the cost of resistance. Um, again, this case, I always try to balance out my resistance. What I like to do when I try when I build ships. Um, I try to fit my resistance so that all of them are around 50%. And then from there, I just try to get as many hit points as I can. So again, this depends on your specific build, which one I would recommend. It depends if you're low on hit points or if you're low on a specific resistance. Um, but it's nice to have the choice and I would probably end up using a, mix, a mixture of, um, of the different resistances and the supercapacitors, depending on what it is I'm trying to do. And that pretty much concludes it. Those are uh, the experimental upgrades I decided to go over today. I didn't go over all of them, but uh, I went over most of them. Um, of course, the, all the materials that you saw here, it isn't the beta server, so it only cost one iron. And I am at the dweller who currently have all of them. He will not have that on the live server. Um, but anyway, I still hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.